I haven't lived in India in 26 years. A lot of what's happening is truly shocking to me. The changes politically, socially, we report, but actually being here and seeing them, that started off my realization that the changes that are happening in India are very, very real. I'm Elizabeth Puranam. I have returned to my home country, India, to report on these very important times. And between us, may apne desh vapas akar bohot khushu, but I can't help but feel afraid about the direction the country is headed in. I was born in Hyderabad in southern India. I remember just having an incredibly happy childhood. I had a really wonderful extended family, a real sense of community. I loved everything about it. I left India in 1994 when I was 10 years old, when we moved to New Zealand. So coming back here, it's been a really long time coming. And I've fallen in love with Delhi. It's like living in an open air museum. There's so much history that you just stumble upon in your everyday life. I love the hustle and the bustle. There's always something to see. The job here really began at the end of last year when I was sent here to cover the protests after the government passed the citizenship law, which fast tracks citizenship to minorities from neighboring countries, but excludes Muslims. This law was seen as, you know, the final straw in this Hindu nationalist government's policies, many of which have been seen to be anti-Muslim. I think this law uh, is an existential threat to the idea of a secular India as it was defined in the constitution. There were protests all over the country. Despite being in places where there was a brutal police crackdown just days earlier, the protests at times were even festive. There was people handing out boxes of samosas, biryani. A tea seller came up to me and offered me some chai they they beat students that they while we were filming. That made it to air. That to me summed up the mood, which was one of resilience and togetherness. I do talk about everything I'm doing with my parents. They're my sounding board. I want to know of the things that I'm experiencing of India as an adult. Are these the things that they experienced? It's been really interesting for me being back here at this time because we've done a lot of stories on religious tensions. And it was after the destruction of this mosque called the Babri Masjid that my father began searching for places to migrate to. This mosque was destroyed by Hindu mobs who believed that it was the birthplace of their god Ram. It actually led to religious violence around the country where at least 2,000 people were killed. Seeing that it had a really deep impact on my father he felt that India was not a place that was safe for minorities any longer. I never completely understood why my parents left. And now that I'm back here, as an adult, I actually do understand. I see a lot more than I did then, including the politics. After the legal battles over the site's ownership, the Supreme Court ruled last year that it belongs to Hindus. It was really difficult for me that day to put that story together because I just couldn't help but think it was the destruction of the mosque that made my father not want to live here anymore. It is difficult to be a journalist in India. We can't ignore the constant reports of journalists being attacked, police action against journalists who have been critical of the government. And I really want to believe that changes that we've seen in the last six years, that the rise of nationalism is not permanent and that this is not the new India. This is exactly where I want to be right now but the return has been bittersweet. I'm not planning on going anywhere. I mean, I've just started, I've just got here. <laughs> <laughs>